Hi guys. Good morning. Oh, look at my chat. <laughs> I did, I, all of a sudden there's a heap of chat here. I've just come in. Hi everyone. How are you going? Um, whew, I'm here. Tuesday again. I feel like these Tuesdays just roll around every time like it gets to Monday and I'm like, oh my goodness, I've got my live again tomorrow. Um, hey everybody. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Mel and I'm a uh, full-time eBay reseller in Australia. And yeah, I come in here on a Tuesday and talk about topics and have a great um, community here of, of people who join my chat. And um, yeah, if you're new here, make sure you put your hand up and say hi. And yeah, I'll just quickly say hi to a few people here. Duncan was in first. Hi, Duncan. And Ian's here. Gay. Merity. Modern Vintage Vogue. R Rorschus Reg. Um, Leanne. 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 I got that wrong. Gimbal's here. David. Sherry. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome, everyone who's joining us. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about something that, um, and did I see Pommy's name as well before I miss him? Hey, Pommy. <laughs> hey, Rod. Hey, Jewel, and Nick's here, and Misha, a few new names. Um, hi. Look, I just thought I would come in here today and talk about bread and butter items because bread and butter items are my whole business, and I am not ashamed of it. <laughs> my whole business revolves around selling bread and butter items, and I actually just went through my stores and, and got some stats for you to share soon as well to tell you exactly, um, you know, how many of my items are bread and butter. But, um, yeah, bread and butter, bread and butter for the win. <laughs> I don't know why some people are so worried about selling bread and butter. I don't know if they feel like um, it's a failure or something if, you, if you're selling cheap items. I've got absolutely no problem with selling cheap, uh, cheap items. I think it's a very um, smart business model. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's the only business model. There's lots of different business models with eBay. So let's chat about the, the different models. Okay, so when you sell on eBay, there's a few different business models that you can follow. So you can either run a store that's got less amount of items in it and they are all more higher end items. So if, you're, if your store is based around higher-end items, you're probably going to have less items in your store because your, your outgoings um, are going to be high buying the more expensive, the more expensive stock. So you, you kind of become that more boutique, boutique store, a bit like if you go to a high-end designer um, shop you know, in a shopping plaza, um, if, you go to, if you go somewhere that sells high-end designer handbags, they actually don't have many handbags in that store, do they? It's quite minimal. Whereas then you, if you go to Kmart or Walmart or, or whatever is the bulk store in your area, it's just full of all this cheap stuff. So you've, you've got those two different models. You've got your, you've got your high-end stores and you've got your low-end items. And then you've got stores that have a little bit of a mix. They might be 50-50 or, um, you know, they, they do aim for those higher-end items, but they still have some bread and butter in their store because bread and butter is like the cash cow. It keeps your store moving. But my store is based on volume and it's based on lower-end items. I'm not ashamed of it and it works well for me and I think the reason why I chose that model was because it's easy for me to source those items it's so easy for me to source bread and butter like bread and butter items are in abundance they are everywhere we will never be short of bread and butter items but finding the higher end items takes much more work and a lot sometimes a lot more knowledge because you have to be quite knowledgeable about certain items that might sell for those higher higher prices so for me I don't know a lot of things about specific fancy collectibles and I don't know a lot about computer games. I don't know a lot about 
um, antiques or collectible toys or anything kind of vintage t-shirts. <laughs> it's just not my jam. I don't know a lot about that stuff. Um, I know a lot about basic items and basic brands and basic mall brands. I guess you would say mall brands. I know a lot about those. So they're actually super easy for me to sell and they're really easy to get my hands on. So it's crazy for me not to want to sell those items. So basically, um, for me, bread and butter items is like, what do you classify as bread and butter items? For me, I classify it as something that I can consistently source in my area for a low cost. And by buying at a low cost, it also means low risk. And it's something that turns over fast. So it doesn't always make you the biggest profit, but it continues to sell over and over. So that's what I would classify as bread and butter. Um, hold on, where's my screen going? Eek. Okay, I don't know what I just did. <laughs> I've just made me really big on my screen here at home. Um, go away, go away. Ooh. Okay, can't see. Eek. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I've lost the whole rest of my screen. I don't know what I've done. I had some notes that's all behind me. I can't see them anymore. Okay, so I've got some facts for you guys. I just went through my eBay stores and had a look at how many items that I have listed. So I have roughly 2,700 items listed at the moment um, on eBay. So, like, that's a that's a fair chunk. I think two thousand seven hundred for somebody working in a in a business solo is quite a lot. Um, you know, it's taken me a long time to get to that stage. So, I've got two thousand seven hundred items, just a little bit over that, but let's say roughly two thousand seven hundred. I've got some notes. Two thousand seven hundred and fifty ish items. And only 10 of those items are selling currently for over $100. So 10 items out of 2,700 are listed for over $100. It's very, very small um, range for me to have items over $100. I don't actively source them, I guess. It's not that, it's not that I don't actively... I don't actively source them. If I if I come across them, beaut, I pick them up. Sometimes I find something, don't even have a clue. It's, I just think it's probably bread and butter. <laughs> pick it up and then come home and I'm pleasantly surprised when I run the comps and, you know, see an item that's listing, you know, for over $50. I'm like, woo, over $50. Like that's a bonus to me. But when I'm outsourcing, I'm actively sourcing stuff that I think will move fast, turn over quickly in my store. And that I'm buying in for a cheap, um, a cheap rate, which is low risk to me. So, what else have I got? So I've got two thousand seven hundred and fifty-ish items listed on eBay. Two, 10 items over hundred dollars, and I have seventy-five items listed between fifty dollars and hundred dollars. So, two thousand seven hundred and fifty, seventy-five of them are listed between fifty and hundred dollars. That is not many in my store that are selling for over $50. So my average sale on eBay is $30. But you have to remember, if I'm doing my average sale on eBay, if I'm punching in my numbers off the eBay app, right? So if I'm looking at my total sales by the total number of items that have sold and I do the maths, um, you know, this this much dollars divided by this many items sold equals this much is my average sale. So that comes to $30. So $29.90 or something. But you have to remember that that also includes the postage. So I would say that my average sale for an item is $20 without postage costs. So the average item I sell is $20. And let's work this out. I, I rarely spend over $2 on an item that I'm buying to sell. I look for cheap items. I buy in low. I If I'm at Vinnie's um, or Salvo's, I'm looking for the stuff that's on the half price and I'm looking at Salvo's, I'm looking for the stuff with the $2 sticker. Um, you know, the cheaper I can buy it, the better. I really don't like buying things 
for higher dollar rate. It's especially with clothes because sometimes they sit um, and, and you don't want to have too much money invested into that stock as if it's secondhand, especially if it's if it's the lower end stuff. Like I wouldn't mind paying up for stock if it's in that $50 plus bra bracket. But I don't have much of that listed. When I look at my numbers and see 75 items out of 2,700 are listed for over $50, it's not very much. So I don't wanna be paying you know, a lot for my stock. So I'm looking to buy the stock that's $2 or less. And um, let's work this out. If my average item that I'm selling is $20, no postage because it's $30 with postage. So let's say $20 without postage. And, the, and I'm paying $2 for an item. I then have my eBay fees, right? So your eBay fees and PayPal or eBay and that, it's roughly 15% once you pay your bit of, I pay 1% for promotion and things like that. So let's say 15%. So 15% of $20 is $3. So I'm paying $3 plus $2 for my item, which is $5. So on a $20 sale, I'm making a $15 profit. So when I say profit, that's just working on eBay fees and cost of goods. It's not my profit overall as a business because that's totally different because I've got so many other expenses that come into play. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not going to be left with $15 exactly because I've got so many other things I have to pay for. But... Um, as a general rule, I'm making a $15 profit on each item that I sell. And then those items all add up and they help pay my monthly expenses and yada, yada. That's how business works. But basically what I'm looking for is items that I can sell for $20 because I know I'm going to make $15 back on those items. And I think that's a pretty good rate of conversion. And I'm, I'm stoked if I can make $15, you know, profit. And I'm stoked if I can make $10 profit. And even if you make a $5 profit, it's still those $5, they all add up. But, you know, if my average is around that $20, I'm basically making an average of $15 per item that I pick up. Now, I can pick up $20 items, the items that I can sell for $20 everywhere. I can go into any charity shop and find that. I'm looking for the basic mall brands of items. I'm not looking for the designer brands, the you know the high end brands. It's not that I'm not looking for them. If I'm flick, if I'm flicking the rack and see a shirt that I know I can sell for over fifty dollars, beaut. Of course, I'm going to look at buying that shirt, and I'm willing to pay extra. I'm willing to pay more for two dollars. For an item that I can sell for a higher rate. But if I want to buy, if I want to sell things for $20, then I don't want to be spending $10 on that item in the charity shop because by the time I've paid $10 for the cost of goods and I've paid for my eBay fees, there's not much less, there's not much profit left that has to pay for everything else in my business and even my time. So um, you know. I'm looking for those I'm looking for those items that I can sell continuously over and over. And the best thing about bread and butter I find as well is it's basically a sell similar. If I'm selling um, a pair of let's say I'm selling a pair of board shorts. Board shorts are an item for me that is bread and butter. If I'm selling a pair of quicksilver board shorts for instance, it's pretty much a sell similar. I I in the summer, I turn over board shorts like like that. <laughs> they're just, they're not high, they're, they don't sell for $50, you know. I put the board shorts on for $25 and I'll take offers anywhere between $15 and $20. And I'm buying those board shorts normally for 2 to $5, um, you know. And the reason why I'll pay up $5 for a pair of board shorts, because I, I just said that I like to buy items for $2 and less, and I do. The majority of my items are $2 or less. But if I've got an item that I know sells fast, really, really fast over and over, then I will pay like that $5. Because if I'm selling, if I buy a pair of board shorts for $5 and turn them over for $25 plus post constantly, that's a bread and butter item for me because it's moving, moving, moving really quickly. And I can quite often get board shorts on the $2 rack and I can buy them at Vinnie's and they might start at $5 and then they go into the half price rack. So 
Um, but if if I saw a really nice quality pair of like Quicksilver or Billabong board shorts for five dollars, I would snap those up because you know they sell for eighty dollars brand new, and I can flip them for twenty five dollars easy. So that's a that's a Brenner. I've just given you a bolo. I'll probably have no um, <laughs> no Quicksilver or Billabong left in my stores this summer. <laughs> Everybody will be selling them. But, like, I, I kind of want to explain that to you, that a, a bread and butter item is something that you know consistently turns over. And it and it can be a little bit of trial and error. You you have to learn what what items you can sell, sell quickly over and over. But the thing about that, so say, for instance, with my Quicksilver shorts, I sell a lot of them. So all I have to do is do a sell similar. I pretty much keep the exact same title and the only thing I'm changing is maybe the size of the shorts and maybe the colour. But otherwise, everything is exactly the same except for flicking over some new photos. The photos are quick. They're flat lay. Bang, bam, bam, bam. Waste. Easy. So quick to photograph and so quick for me to list because it's just a sell similar. Yet here I am making like easy $15 profit off an item that's, you know, taking me next to no time. I don't have to do any research. You know, I pretty much always list for exactly the same price, $25. My board shorts will always be $25. So it's just such a simple, it's just like a batch process, isn't it? Like I don't have to look up that item. I already know what I'm going to sell that item for. So when I'm in the op shop, and I'm flipping through those items because of trial and error, and I've learned that in the past, I already know that item's going to sell for $25 or it's going to be listed for $25 and I'll take an offer on it. I'll, I'll sure take an offer for it. So I can flick through it in the rack and I'll know if there's profit in it to be made. If those board shorts are listed for $10, I'm not touching them. If they're even listed for $7, I'll let them, I'll let them go because it's, it's too much. But $5 or under, on the board shorts in my in my trolley straight away but predominantly uh, that's not the right word predominantly i mainly look for the items around that two dollar mark and there's plenty of them there's so many items around two dollars in the charity shops it's crazy and they are all just regular mall brands and it's so you think about it's so achievable to think that you can actually sell over and over and source to like two dollar items that you can sell for 20 it makes it seem it makes it sound achievable I actually like i can't even tell you like how many times have i found like a rare really rare vintage t-shirt while i've been flipping through the racks very very few i've very few they're just not something that i come across very often so perhaps if you live in an area where you can find all these really rare and vintage and collectible items, then that business model works for you. But if you're maybe like a regular mum like me who, who actually has no clue about vintage band T-shirts or, um, you know, computer games or collectible toys or fancy stuff or DVD players, electronics. I'm absolutely useless at electronics. I would not know to buy a Wii or a PlayStation if it's going to work. And I wouldn't know how to test it if it's going to work. So yes, I could learn that. And yes, I know there's money in that, but it's a process. And you know, like I'm busy with my kids and busy running a business. And I don't like, it's going to take me several goes to learn how to test a playstation and work out what chords it needs and like do, how to do the controllers i don't know how to play a game i've never played a game <laughs> so you know like i i want um other i i kind of yeah i just think there's a lot of mums out there or maybe not even mums just regular people who don't who don't know a lot about these um fancy things that a lot of people sell on eBay and maybe that can be a little bit daunting like you feel like it's quite daunting to have to um to think that that's what you need to sell on on eBay to make lots of money and it's truly not you know like I I'm making a full-time income now I am clearing around eight to nine hundred dollars a week in profit selling twenty dollar items <laughs> 
So, and and my business is growing, 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 growing. I'm upscaling it at the moment. You know, I've, I've just gone into a storage unit. In fact, I've gone into multiple storage units. You know, I'm testing out hiring somebody at the moment to help me, which I'll talk about later on once I've sorted all the finer details. But, you know, I'm my business is scaling up because I'm selling these cheap items and it's just becoming more and more for me. So I, I know that I can scale my business up to the next level because there's an abundance of items for me to buy in this price racket. It's now just getting some extra help on board for me because there's only so much I can do as a one-man band. Um, you know, like I've only got so many hours in my day. I can't fit it all in. I can source more. I can buy loads and loads of stock that's down at this price bracket, but I now I need some help, you know, helping me sort it, helping me list it, helping me photograph it. Like I, I'm starting to need a little bit of help. However, that's because I want to scale up to the next um, income bracket and I am doing this as full time. Whereas somebody else who's part time and might want to make a couple hundred dollars a week just as a side hustle to help pay for a family holiday or pay off the bills or whatever it might be, like I want you to know it's really easy that you can make a side hustle out of selling cheap items. And, you know, you don't have to sell any flash. You can sell your basic brand clothes and your basic brand shoes and, you know, find things that you find regularly in a, in a shop. I have one book, for instance. I'm not going to share what it is because <laughs> then it'll be all gone. I have one book, for instance, that... I just sell over and over and over and over and I pick it up nearly every single time I go into a charity shop <laughs> and it's so easy like it's like it doesn't sell for a lot of money it sells for like $18 it's not a huge it's not a big winner however it, I like I pick it up constantly every single time I go in and nearly as soon as I list it it's gone and it's just a constant sell similar for me with a new picture of the front of the book um, to show its condition. But, you know, otherwise it's just it's just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And, you know, that's how I that's how I run my business. <laughs> and I've totally missed the chat because I've been yabbering. So wow, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to catch up here. Hello to everybody that I missed. <laughs> um I let me just, I've, I've somehow made my screen really big. I can't, let me just move the microphone. I'm finding it hard in my head that I can make money with an item ranging between $9 and $14 with postage. Can anyone help me out? I'm finding it hard in my head that I can make money with items ranging between $9 and $14 with postage. Okay, so um, my average sale is, 20, is $30 and that includes the postage. So it's roughly around that, ten dollars maybe twenty dollars maybe twenty two dollars without the postage so you can still make money off a low-end item for something like nine to fourteen dollars and that's including your postage okay so say you're selling something for fourteen dollars and that includes postage of eight fifty that's not a huge amount in that that's like six dollars fifty so if you are only making $6.50 there, plus you've got to pay your fees and your cost of goods, you need to make sure that your cost of your item is very low. You wouldn't want to be paying more than 50 cents an item, I don't think, if you, you were selling for $14 and that included your postage. But when you think of things like DVDs, they, they are a common thing that you pick up. People pick up DVDs in bulk for like, 20 cents, 30 cents, 50 cents, you know, you can go to your charity shops and you can buy a DVD for a dollar and then you'll see people selling it like $10 including the postage and you think, oh, they're not making very much money but it's all just constant churn and burn and moving fast and all those, all the, it's it's just a different business model and they, they all add up. I could go into the shop and buy four Wiggles DVDs, right? And I could pay 50 cents each for, for some Wiggles DVDs, even a dollar. And I could bundle those up. Instead of selling them individually for nine to $10, I could bundle those four DVDs into, into a bundle, sell them for like $30. You know, I've only got one lot of postage then. And, you know, I'm going to be making easy 
my $15, $20 profit. So, you know, you just have to, when you're buying low-end items, think, think smart about how you're going to sell them. And things like DVDs, like you, there's no reason why you can't buy them for super cheap. And instead of selling them as one at a time, sell them as like four. Like you might get like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle DVDs or put them all together or a whole heap of Nickelodeon or ABC Kids or Play School. Um, bundle them all together and, you know, next minute you'll see your profit is actually higher, but you, you, you're low, your buying cost is still low. You could have four DVDs that have only cost you $2 and then you sell that item for $30, $35. That's decent profit just sitting there out of a $2 sale. So, yeah. Um, do you always tend to have around 2,000, 2,500 listings live? I am trying to grow my store. So I used to have about 2,000. I'm sitting at around that, what is it, 2,700 at the moment. Um, and I'm, I'm still building. So now that I've gone into some storage units, <laughs> I can build more. But, you know, that that is because I am selling this bread and butter stuff, but I'm looking for a full-time income so it depends how much money you want to work if if you're only going to sell bread and butter item like me you need to have a volume store because you need to be able to churn over um a lot of items to make the money you know like i might have to sell four items to somebody who's selling 80 to 100 dollar items consistently and i have to sell four items to their one so i might have to have a much bigger store but my items are so quick and easy to list because I'm not having to spend a lot of time on researching um, items and finding out their value and their worth because I'm selling such basic things and I'm selling things that I know sell regularly and I'm selling things that I've sold a lot of in the past. So it's very easy for me to just do sell similar, sell similar, and it makes my listing process much faster as well. Um, you know, I roughly know if I'm buying a pair of jeans to sell at a certain brand, I roughly know how much those jeans are going to cost. It's not very often that I find a pair that might be like normally worth this much. And then all of a sudden I find a pair that's up here. Most of the jeans I'm finding are, are selling for the, for a similar price range. So it all becomes very easy just to rinse and repeat, sell and repeat. And it's just churn and burn and churn and burn. Um, hey Mel, for for eBay free account, you get forty free listings every month, which means we can list forty in October and another forty in November. This will allow me to list eighty items in two months, or a total of forty every month. You basically get four if you're only if you're on the eBay free account, you get forty free listings a month. That includes the items that you've sold. So if you've if you've had 40 items in your store and 20 of them have sold, then you can probably only have 20 items left in your store for that month that are free. You can still list more than the 50, like uh, the 40 there. You can keep listing more than the 40, but everything that you list, you're going to pay an insertion fee on. And then those insertion fees start to add up. And so then that's when you need to start looking at whether or not you go to a store. If you're selling on a consistent basis and you're actively out there sourcing items to resell and you want to start growing it, you're probably better to start looking at going into a, one of the smaller stores and then building up to the middle level store. But um, the, the 40 free listings can go quite quickly and it does include the items that you're selling as well. So, yeah, they keep ticking over every month. So, no, it, it won't allow you to have 80 items for free. It's it's 40 and it's a rollover each month. So it'll be 40 each month. So it stays at 40 and it includes what you've sold. So I hope I've explained that okay. I have mostly bread and butter, but I didn't intend it to be that way. I think sometimes it's really nice to think of buying items and, and making those higher end sales, like it's really quite exciting, isn't it, when you sell something that's, you know, worth a lot of money. But um, you have to be able to sell what you can actively source. And I also think that you need to be able to sell things that you are comfortable in selling and that you know a lot about. So, I yes, I could spend a lot more time researching um, 
collectibles or vintage or games or something and I could I could put I could definitely learn about those items to sell and then actively source them more but you know I'm actually quite happy just doing this rinse and repeat method it's working for my business and you know I just find it so easy and it's just such an abundance and I, I just think you've got to look where, where you live as well and what's available to you. And what's available to me is totally different to what's available to you. And perhaps what's bread and butter for me um, won't be bread and butter for you. So there's an item in my store that I sell over and over as well, yet my friend Bron doesn't sit, can't sell it to save herself. So you know, we, we can be trying to sell exactly the same items and for some reason I can sell them and she can't sell them even though it's the same thing. So it's quite interesting how sometimes what works for one person and one person's store doesn't work for somebody else. Um, like I said, like I sell a lot of board shorts but maybe if you try and sell board shorts, maybe you won't sell a lot of board shorts, but maybe it's because we've got different things in our store and what's focused on and um, who knows, who knows what, what it is and, and the the algorithm of how eBay works and what who who gets who gets shown up higher in the list and who doesn't. But you know, I definitely think that, you know, this, oh, this I just think bread and butter is a little bit overlooked and a little bit underrated. And um, sometimes I think people are a little bit embarrassed to say, I'm just gonna sell the cheap things because maybe, maybe they feel like that's bad or, or, or I, I'm not sure I'm not sure but I've got absolutely no shame in churning and burning and having like a sausage factory type business model <laughs> that just churns and burns these cheap items over and over and you know it works for me and it, it works for a lot of big stores as well big companies you'll see them Kmart big W like um Walmart I, I think Walmart I'm not in America but I, I get the impression it's those kind of stores where everything is kind of on the lower end cheaper and they just move stock along fast and fast they don't sit on it they're not those boutique stores that are willing to have the higher price and sit on them I just want to keep moving it moving it moving it that's why I take offers on lots of things as well you know like I want to just keep moving that it's like a cash cow isn't it you know it, it just keeps my whole business churning and it keeps the cash flow coming so that I can buy more stock and you know like it's it's awesome how many of your orders come from using promoted listings so I haven't actually done the percentage ratio but I put everything on a 1% um, promoted listings and not all of them come from promoted. Like I, when I look at my solds, I do see some that say sold via promoted listings, but I wouldn't say it's the majority of my orders are being sold by the promoted, um, but I definitely have 1% on everything. I don't think it hurts to have 1% on everything. Um, seems to work for me. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't make my eBay bill too high. I certainly don't do the, you know, percentage that eBay tells me that I need to promote at. Like sometimes they say you, this item needs to be promoted at 7% or something. And I just think that's absolutely ridiculous. You know, I'll promote it at 1% and it still sells. $15 doesn't even coffee. I do drink a lot of coffee, don't I? <laughs> Everyone chases the big bucks, but the small acorns soon add up absolutely like I think it's you know I actually think it's amazing that I've built a whole business that now is bringing me like a full-time income and I'm not going to say it's been easy it hasn't it's taken me it's taken me a long you know a, a, a while like I've been reselling a few years and you know I've been reselling full-time for about 18 months but you know, it's not an easy slog. You know, I have had to work hard and I do put in a lot of hours, but I absolutely love what I do and I get to stay home and work from home and be with my kids and take days off when I want them off and go to breakfast if I want to have breakfast or meet a girlfriend for lunch or I can work it into my day. So, you know, I love all the flexibility that comes with working from home and, um, you know, it's, it's just so when you're a one-man band as well like you have to be time efficient and 
I just don't think I could source enough high-end items. When I look at my numbers there in my store, if you missed what I said earlier, because I can see there's more people in this chat now, I have 2,750 items listed in my store and only 10 of those items are valued at over $100. And there is 75 listed items between $50 and $100. And everything else is under $50 for sale. And the majority of it is down around the $30, $35 marks. So... You know, I just buy what is in abundance to me and I buy things that are simple and I buy things that I know that I can just turn over really quickly and really fast. And if I find something that sells consistently in my store, even if it doesn't bring in as much money, like I was saying before, I have one one book that I can just buy over and over nearly every single time I walk into a charity shop and I only sell it for like $18. It's not a big winner. But because I sell it so consistently, it's easy just to do a sell similar. And it's the same with shorts for me. Like in summer, they are like a, a big hit for me. They just oh, churn, churn, churn them over like it's crazy. Um, but, you know, so many items of clothes, you know, that are just that just consistently sell. Um, sh like even like little girls' denim shorts. Like I can move denim shorts really quite fast, especially the little cheeky ones that show like half the bum. <laughs> they seem to sell, especially little Wrangler ones and stuff, you know, they're like good sellers and you can pick them up easily in the charity shop on the $2 tickets, um, you know. So look for those cheap items. Look for those items that are on sale for around the $2 that are more brands but not like Kmart or Supre. You know, I'm probably not going to sell Kmart or Supre for $20 plus postage. I'm looking for the stuff that I can sell for $20 plus postage. So, you know, you're kind of looking for those more brands that are still, you know, even like Target I can sell for $20 plus post. But you've you've got you've got brands that are in the mall that are readily available. Um you active wear you know it's easy to find active wear that's quite good quality it's easy to fair like even like tops let's say sports craft witchery seed brands that you find in Meyer and david jones and um you know shoes it's so easy to find secondhand shoes like hush puppies um bits bits um nine west all those kind of all those brands are readily available in the shopping mall. So most people are buying their clothes from the shopping mall and when they're sick of them, they donate them to the charity shop. So that's what's really readily available to find. It's hard to find those items that are worth more money. You have to really hunt for them. And some people love that hunt. It's exciting to get that hunt. And it's exciting when you find an item like, say you found the Mambo Loud rare shirt that you know is going to sell for over $200. Yeah, that's super exciting. But if I was in there just looking for Mambo Loud all the time, I'd, I've never found one in my whole life. <laughs> so that one Mambo Loud shirt that might sell for over $200, meanwhile, I flipped, um, you know, a different brand men's shirt, Rod and Gun. Meanwhile, I've flipped Rod and Gun like this 10 times over making what I'd make off that one Mambo Loud shirt. So I'm not really in there looking for the Mambo Loud. I'm in there looking for the rod and gun that I know that I can turn over on a on a quick basis for really fast. So, yeah. Um, where are we? Um, my business model I'm comfortable with is where I spend no more than $2 for clothes and 50 cents or less for books. I love bread and butter items. You know, like I, you can, like $2, it's really quite easy to get clothes for $2. You'll be surprised once you start looking, you know. And, um, you know, even on Facebook lately, I've been doing some I've been doing some sourcing on Facebook and I'm in this one clothing group for ACT and people are selling like bundles now of clothing because they're just clearing out their they're clearing out their wardrobe and I'm it's amazing some of the bundles that I've picked up and they're actually they're the thing that's good about them is they're all the same size and you know I like selling things of the same size because then I get multi buys you know I quite often have 
a single person that might buy anywhere between four or five items from my store. That's quite common for me. So if I can buy like a heap of items that are quite similar because somebody's got like a, a buying from somebody's wardrobe, they quite often got similar brands, they're same sizes, they sometimes they're even a similar color palette and that's good to add into my store because if somebody else comes to buy something from my store and then sees that I have other things, then they make a multi-purchase. And then I'm only got one postage cost and then I'm bundling them all up, more money for me. Um, I am waiting for the op shops to open. DBG saying UK is going into full lockdown again. Um, where are we? Hello, everyone that's here. If you've got any more questions, please put them down or write question because I'm, I'm struggling to keep up with this chat. I can see there's 120 people in here, which I think is a record. Um, where are we? Um, this industry is the best. I'm never going to make a million, but I can do what I want and when I want. I shop for a living. I have lunch with the friends occasionally, home for the kids. What's not to love? Absolutely. And I sell cheap items that I can pick up everywhere I go. <laughs> it's, it's actually so good, you know, and like I prefer to shop at the Salvos over the Vinnies in, here in Australia because the Salvos have the $2 tickets and they come around every like four weeks and every week there's a different colour that's on for $2. And there's some stores that I go to. There's one store in particular that I go to and the amount of $2 items, it's one of the biggest stores, but the amount of $2 items is just crazy and I have made so much money off those $2 items and flipping them. And, you know, I, I, I don't know, I, I wanted to do this chat today because I wanted it, I want you to know that it's achievable to make a business selling low-end items and that you don't have to know a lot about fancy things or fancy brands or fancy collectibles. You can sell the basics and still make good money. You can, you can, you can sell it. And whether or not it's money that you just want for a side hustle or if you want to scale it up to be a full-time job, and, and everybody needs a different amount of money as their full-time income, you know. Somebody's full-time income might be, um, they might be happy with $600 a week clear or $800 a week clear. Personally, I want $1,500 to $2,000 a week clear and I'm not there yet, but I'm scaling up and I'm going to get there. I know I am because I'm driven and I'm determined and I'm a hard worker and I'm putting processes into place at the moment to make sure that I'm able to scale up. You know, to get to that level, I need help. I can't do it all myself. I can't be earning $2,000 a week profit on my own selling $20 items. Like it's a lot of work. It's a lot of turnover. It's a lot of um, stock that's needed. Not only do I have to source a lot of stock, but that's listing a lot of stock and, you know, shipping a lot of stock and, you know, all that kind of comes into play. Um, but I know I'm going to get there and, you know, I'm very driven and I know it's coming and I'm going to feel really proud when I can sit here and say I'm making, I'm clearing $2,000 a week off selling $20 basic bread and butter items that I'm picking up for $2. So the I want to say one of the other best things about um, selling bread and butter items is the low risk because, if you think about it, if I've got 2,000, let's say you have 2,000 items listed in your store and you you know that you've pretty much made paid $2 or less for all those items in your store, your stock value on a 2,000 level store could be worth $4,000, which isn't a huge risk when you think about it, is it? Whereas if I've got 2,000 items and I've spent $15, $20 on this stock, like that's a huge risk. <laughs> if that doesn't sell, that's a lot of money that's sitting in my home garage or something that's just sitting there or gathering dust or, you know, that, you know, that's scary. That would be scary for me. I would be sitting there going, crap, I've got a lot of money invested in this stock and I need to move it over. Whereas if I've got an item that's $2 or less and after like a year or something, it hasn't even sold, I've got no worries with redonating that item. That was just a loss. I've learned. I learned that that brand or that item was no good. A lot of it is trial and error. Um, but if I've got something that I've paid fifteen dollars for, 
oh, that's like a punch in the guts to re-donate it <laughs> or get rid of it. Like I feel like sick about that, like, oh, $15, you know, wow, you know, could have put $15 extra on my mortgage or <laughs> do you know what I mean? So I kind of feel like there's so much more low risk involved in buying bread and butter items. And, you know, for me um, with a family, that's also important. And I also, I haven't borrowed any money for this business. All the money, you know, I started off selling only a few things and I've grown it and I've grown those 2,700 items all just by using the profits from my business. But, you know, like I, I, I'm so glad that I don't have tens of thousands of dollars worth of stock in my home because that would stress me out as well. Like I'd be worried about people breaking in, <laughs> you know, like um, actually that's one thing I love about having a storage unit. It all contains insurance and stuff. So all my stock's now over in the storage units. It's it's off site, it's off home. And, you know, that's that's quite that's quite a good feeling but I don't know there's something about having cheap items that it's just so much lower risk and you know sometimes with this business it can be a little bit risky you might have things that don't sell you know we might have pandemics that change everything um you know there is risk involved in going into business and it can be scary and it can be scary as a beginner as well wondering if you can be prepared to take those risks but you know having a having a bit of a dabble with some lower end items that you're buying for cheap and just trying to move fast it's actually quite fun and you know you can have a lot of stock built up but not have a huge stock value you know, at the end of the day, if I sat there and went, I've had enough of reselling and I know my stock's worth 4000 you know, it's not a, it wouldn't be a, like, yes, it's a loss if I was to just close up my shop. Like that, this is saying if I just closed it up, you know, but I don't know, like I, I, there's something about buying those low end items and having lower risk, especially when you're doing it from home and you've got, you know, other responsibilities and, you know, what if something goes wrong? What if what if my whole what if I lose my whole eBay business? You know, imagine if I had tens of thousands of dollars worth of stock and something happened to eBay and I lost my business. Like what how would I sell tens of thousands of dollars worth of stock? Um, so I think for me it's quite reassuring to know that, you know, my stock levels actually aren't worth <laughs> that much money. You know, like it's it's not worth that much if, if in terms of what I've actually paid for it. Yep. Night Laney. Um, where are we? <laughs> Bread and butter is more than two dollars where I am. Every time I go to Canberra, I hit the big Salvo's claw store up. Um, top absolute shambles down the bottom with toys and other junk. I know the one you're talking about. It is a big store and, um, yeah, downstairs is pretty junky. <laughs> it is. A, I kind of like that they keep it separate in that store, but they have they have great clothes in that store that you're talking about, Scott, and, you know, I do a lot of sourcing in that stock and, you know, it's so many items for $2. It's crazy. So many, so many. Um do I have power? No, I don't have any power at the units. None of the none of the storage units here have any power. So I just basically print all my labels out here and then I take them take them over to the unit. So I've got all my listed stock and my packing area in the storage unit and my unlisted stock and my photography and my computer and everything is still done here at home. So I only have to go to the storage three times a week to pick and pack my orders. So I'm not there for very long. Like I go in there, knock it out in an hour or so and I'm coming back home. So it's really good. I'm still here even though I've taken some storage off site, I'm still here with the kids and the family and, and working at home, which is which is good. Um, my son sells high-end items on other platforms than eBay. And when COVID first hit, not only could he not source the items from overseas, but also no one was buying either. Yeah, that's true. You know, like the if you're selling higher-end items and that something like this pandemic hits or a recession and all of a sudden we're all strapped for money, 
um, people are going to be thinking harder about what they're spending their money on. And if you're selling really high-end items, and, and I'm not sure what he sells, but he might be selling like sneakers, for instance, and selling them on Goat or something, um, where you're buying high-end high sneakers, Yeezys and stuff, and then selling them on these shoe sites. Um, I know my son would like to be doing that. Um, but, yeah, it is. And it, it's harder to source the items that are worth more money. There's no doubt about it. It's so easy to source cheap items. And I think reselling is also becoming a lot more trendy. There's a lot more resellers around. There's a lot more people who are wanting to dabble in this and who are interested in it, whether or not it's just for a side hustle or, um, you know, for to scale up to full time. There's a lot more people who want to be doing it. And I don't think that's going to go away. I think we're going to see more and more people over the next few years who are interested in reselling. And, you know, like, we need to be looking for the items that are in abundance. And you, you go into the charity shops and they are full of bread and butter items and you, you physically have to pick through to find the items that are worth more. But the majority of that store is bread and butter. So we should be looking for more bread and butter items to sell and keep our businesses churning in that cash cow and lower risk, lower risk items in our business. I always pick up the one pound items, which is probably equivalent to your $2. Yep, it is. We're, we're about double. So yeah, your one pound is about our $2. So yep. Hello, I'm new here. I absolutely agree with you. I buy lower priced items and have done very well. I'm losing my voice. I'm new to reselling and I don't have a lot of money to invest in yet. And that's so true, Belinda. Like if, if, if I get a lot of mums and stuff who follow me on Instagram, and if you are a like a mum who just wants to start doing this as a, or a dad, you know, if you're just somebody who wants to start doing this as a little bit of a side hustle to maybe get together a deposit for a house or um, save for a holiday or just have that extra couple hundred dollars a week in, in your pocket, then, you know, you've got to start somewhere and you've, you don't need to be spending a lot of money to make a business like this work. If you only want to make $100 in profit, you know, it's quite easy to do that. Like, like what I'm saying here is if I'm buying items for $2, selling them for $20 plus post, I'm making a $15 profit. So if you want to make an extra $100 a week, then you only have to sell like, what is it? Um, a, seven items a week that's like one a day to make an extra hundred dollars a week to to go into your little kitty so um it's quite achievable and it makes it feel like achievable like how many people would love just an extra hundred dollars a week it would be so good oh thank you drifter thicker <laughs> thrifters i need a drink i'm losing my voice thank you <laughs> sent me a super sticker Woohoo! let me have a drink okay does anyone have any questions? Because um, <laughs> I fancy a sandwich or this bread and butter talk. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I've, I'm, I've, I've built this business around bread and butter. I've never been ashamed of it. I've always worked hard and, you know, I have had to kind of, somebody used to say um, to me, does Mel, is Mel like in a sweatshop? Does she have all these like little minions that are working for her because she's always going so so fast and selling so much? But I think it's just that business model that I took on right from the beginning. I knew what I knew what was in abundance in my area. Just by going in and looking, you can tell. You can tell how many things are like just if you've never sold before, go through your charity shops and see, look at the brands and see what you recognize. I'm not a fancy brand girl. Like some of the fancy brands, I wouldn't even know. And, you know, a lot of vintage items, I wouldn't even know. You know, I can kind of tell a vintage item, but I wouldn't know what it's worth or sometimes the brand. And I'm sure I skip past some of them. And, you know, I'm sure I've let money go because I don't know all the brands. I focus more on the mall brands and, you know, it works It works well for me. I make a, I make a good income now and you know i'm here i'm here doing this from home and i love it we have always embraced the bread and butter stuff but also love the big flips when we get them too yeah i mean they're they're fun to get they're exciting to get they're um 
it, there's a there's a thrill about it when you find something in the thrift shop, especially if you're not actively out there hunting for it like me. I just kind of if I find something that's worth more, I'm like excited. And if I sell something that's worth more, it is exciting. I'm not going to I'm not going to disagree. Um, but yeah, I just I just don't focus on it. And, you know, all my little ones just keep churning over and add up to like what somebody else's big one is. Um, where are we? People think you need to make X amount of dollars per sale. If I can sell 150 cent items and we can make $5 profit for each, I'll take that all day. Yeah, I mean, I, I just, I love, I'm, I'm just as happy to buy something for 50 cents and make a $25 profit. When you think about it, if I've bought something for $40 and sell it for $150, like once upon a time I bought a pair of shoes for $45, Katmandu, um, black hiking boots, awesome condition, they were awesome. I sold them very fast for about $150, $160. And that was exciting. But really, I kind of only tripled my money, didn't I? Because I was I bought them for like 45, sold them for like 150 or something. I can't remember the exact amount. So I kind of like did a three, four times my amount of money. Whereas when I buy something for $1 and I sell it for 20, it's like 20 times my money. <laughs> and, and that's just as exciting to me as a big, you know, sometimes I'm just blown away with stuff that I can buy for 50 cents, a dollar, $2.00. And, you know, when I sell something like that for $35, $40, I'm just like, it's almost like a mind blow to me. Like, what? I paid like 50 cents for that. <laughs> How did that sell for $40? Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I get just as much of a thrill from that than, than if I was to go and sell like a T-shirt for $200. <laughs> because, you know, that's so few and far between. But, you know, like a, a lot of the days I'm selling things for $30, $40, you know, that I've paid $2 for. And I, I think it's crazy. Um, so much bread and butter in clothes. The big finds are rare, but they're fun. Yeah, they are. And I haven't found many of them. I don't know. I just haven't found many rare big finds here where I live. Maybe Canberra people are too boring. <laughs> um, I think I've missed some of the – have I missed Super Chats? Oh, I have two. Ron, naughty girl. <laughs> Fund when we celebrate this financial year. Yes, I can't wait. I can't wait till we can get up to Queensland again and we can go and have a big party. Thanks, Brom. You didn't have to do that. Butterfly Hustles, $5. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. I'm not, I don't expect... Um, I'm, I'm actually, I don't know what's going on here. There's like 150 people in this chat. This has never happened. <laughs> Thank you, Butterfly Hustles. Thank you so much. Oh, Pat Dees is one here from you, $2. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe I've missed all these. If I've missed, I can't scroll up anymore. If I've missed any more, someone, t someone tell me. Thank you, guys. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Um. <sighs> Liz Queensland, I agree. 95% of my store is bread and butter and sells for $20, $30 plus post. Just keeps it just keeps flipping, doesn't it, Liz? Like it just it just sells often, you know, like I think there's less, you know, there's so much less risk in us outlaying for cheap stuff and then selling it for $20, $30. You know, I think people are, I know that if I see something that I want and it's only $20, $30, then I quite often just hit the, the buy button. Whereas if something is $50, then I sit there and go, mm, I might wait till next pay. <laughs> I think about it a little bit more. So I think there's that psych psychological thing as well as a buyer that if something is lower end, it's like mm, 20 bucks, that's nothing. Yep, flip it into my cart and, you know, I buy it. Whereas if something, yeah, if something is more costly, then I do. I sit there and go, oh, what bills do I have this week? Or, you know, uh, I, I really should not spend that much on, on a T-shirt, you know, this week or something. So, you know, I think as a buyer, it's it's easier to buy things for twenty thirty dollars like you don't you don't really think about them you just hit the buy and you go so yeah um mel you deserve all you get you're an inspiration i meant when i said to you earlier today you are the most driven person i know thanks nick <laughs> thank you nick you um yeah you sent me some nice messages this morning and i do appreciate it 
Um, I agree, Nick. Um, Mel is generous and I, don't make me blush. <laughs> Thank you, Gay. Um, I found a Lisa Ho shirt with tags for $450 shirt. I had it out for $79 and I thought it would sell quick, but it took nearly a year and a half to sell for $65, but I churned out more than 20 items in that time. This is the thing. An item is only worth what somebody's prepared to pay for it. And sometimes we get... Um, uh, what's the word we get caught up with what a price tag says it's worth and you know you, like there you go oh $450 shirt I'm going to make a lot of money on this shirt by flipping it but then like you said you've sold it you've took a year over a year to sell you've had to store it for all that time you know it almost becomes a stale listing you probably had to end and relist it a few times to stop it from getting stale and then it becomes time consuming and yeah you sold it for $65 but meanwhile like you know like today or something you might have sold three items that are like lower it could be just target basic target you know target or um billabong or sports craft or whatever it is just more basic items that are so readily available in the shop and you could sell three of them in the one day and there's your 65 dollars you know whereas yeah i i i'm all for the bread and butter <laughs> bread and butter for the win bread and butter for the win um Radio, I think I'm going to end it here. I can't even see the time because, like I said, I've made my screen really big somehow and I can't see anything else on my desktop. Um, what are we doing? Go out West Mill. Some thrifting gold out there. Orange Dubbo found a heap in Malong. Do you know I'm going to Young in a few weeks? So I'm hoping that maybe they've got some charity shops out there that I can have a look for, have a look through. So yeah, I'll definitely be as I go out to Country Way, you know, in a few weeks, I'm definitely going to be looking. Um some of the op shops get caught up too as one of the salvos was trying to sell a brand new with tag sports craft jeffs which was originally selling for 300 for 75. i think that's the problem they, they they find these items with the tags and they go oh wow this is expensive it's worth money so then they put it in their store but i mean how many people are really walking into the charity shop who want to spend 75 dollars on a on a brand new dress you could probably get that dress for $75 on, on the clearance rack in Maya. So, yeah, they sometimes, you know, but they'll probably learn from that. Like I noticed the other week I was in a charity shop and they had an item there that was marked for a higher price. And I've been seeing the same item in the shop continuously week in, week out. And then the other day when I was in there, it was marked right down. So they've obviously decided that has sat here for too long because it was too high and they marked it right down to it to a cheap price so it was interesting for me to see that so they i think sometimes they do realize when they've made a mistake but that you know obviously they're a business and they're trying to get as much as they can as well but um i'm gonna head off guys and get a drink but i'm glad we had this chat today and you know i i really wanted to share my thoughts on bread and butter because it's worked for me you know don't be ashamed if you want to sell bread and butter items you know don't be embarrassed by it you know there's you know i know it's exciting to see you know other other resellers especially on instagram when you see all these these posts about these big big ticket items that they're selling or these really cool rare items that they're finding and I sit there and think I don't find anything about that I wonder if everybody would be just as excited if I put up my $15 Miller's top <laughs> so you know <laughs> uh, you know it is what it is and it works for me and you know I hope it's I hope it's relatable to you guys and can and can make it seem like it's an achievable business model to do and you know you don't have to you do have to do a little bit more volume but it also depends on how much money you want to come away at the end of the day and if you want like a part-time income or a full-time income um everybody has different incomes that they need you know how much money i need to live off is different to how much money you need to live off so you know you can't kind of compare just work out how much you want to live off or how much you want as an extra side hustle to go towards a, a holiday or a bill or, you know, a handbag, whatever it might be. And, you know, go for it. And don't be afraid to find those cheap more brands. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for all the super chats for you guys and for everyone who is in this chat today. Um, you know, I can't thank you enough. Thanks, guys. Bye.